seems like there's a a love affair right now in the valley for Donald Trump. This is not a political show, but but this is coming into AI in our space in our room. And one thing we don't like is when people will try to wrap their own economic interests um, in uh, or uh, be they try to wrap their economic interests with the American flag. And be, oh, I'm so patriotic, this and that, and this is why I'm for this, that, and this. And this is certain VCs are now all of a sudden patriotic. They're, they 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 found the religion of patriotism, and they're saying I support Donald for this reason, um, and it's not to do with the fact that if he gets elected, then it's going to help my investments. No, 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 it's because I'm a patriot, and we don't like that. We like people who are more straight up. I support him for a tax cut, or I support Biden because I think I want to shore up social safety nets or whatever. That's more direct. We appreciate that, but we don't like the virtue signaling. So there is um, a story called Trump allies draft AI order to launch Manhattan Project for Defense. The plan to make America first in AI and roll back the burdensome regulations would favor Silicon Valley investors who are now flocking to support the former president. Former President Donald Trump's allies are drafting a sweeping AI executive order. That would launch a series of Manhattan projects to develop military technology and immediately review unnecessary and burdensome regulations, signaling how a potential second Trump administration may pursue AI policies favorable to Silicon Valley investors and companies. The framework would also create industry-led agencies to evaluate AI models and secure systems for foreign adversaries, according to a copy of the document viewed exclusively in Washington Post. Another thing is I hate when people just don't put the document out there so we can see what it is. It's just we have to go by third person, just like when Leopold and the rest of the alignment kooks were like, oh, I can't say this because my NDA and blah, 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 blah. And they were just conflating things and not making it clear if, if they pre-committed to signing an NDA in their offer letter or if this was an NDA at the back end that was BS that said they could never talk bad about the company, but they never show it to you, so you can't really do anything. And so the framework, which includes a section titled Make America First in AI, presents a markedly different strategy for booming sector than, than that of the Biden administration, which last year issued a sweeping executive order that leverages emergency powers to subject the next generation of AI systems to safety testing. Now, I'm not going to bore you by going through the whole entire um, executive order the White House created, but basically it's, it's kind of like the EU, to a degree, it's like the EU AI Act, which basically said, hey, you know what OpenAI is already doing? Uh, you're doing evaluations, testing, risk mitigation of AI systems, do that. That'd be great. Okay, great. And a lot of these things, the EU AI Act and what this executive order that Biden's asking for, we're just like, really? Like, duh, duh, we're already doing that already. So it was more of like they're protecting their own ass. I still don't think there should be any type of regulation on AI, AI at this point because I'm not seeing anything out there. It's like, oh, this is... This is going to kill everyone if it gets in the wrong hands. Ooh. I think instead we should continue, you know, to continue letting companies iterate on this, improve the tech, and let, let's see where it takes itself. But we don't want to risk going into these heavy hand regulations. We don't fully understand what the impacts of that's going to be. So let's go back over here. The framework would also create industry uh, level uh, agencies to evaluate AI models, read that. Police from the American First Policy Institute, a nonprofit led by Trump's former chief economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, and other Trump officials have been involved in, in the effort, according to a person familiar with the matter, who spoke in condition of anonymity to discuss private plans. In preparation this week for the National Convention in Milwaukee, the GOP adopted a platform that includes repealing the Biden AI executive order, which some tech investors and startups have said creates regulatory burden that stifles innovation. I, I, I've yet to see a startup who said that, that that executive order has done anything to get in the way of what they're trying to get done. And also executive orders aren't worth, aren't worth the paper they're written on because the next administration comes in and they can, they can repeal it. And also they can be challenged in the courts and it's really hard. And even though Biden's using the um, de- defense production, uh, what's it called? The defense productions act. Let's see. Defense. Production. Yes. Defense production act, act 1950 in the United States, federal law enacted in 1915 in response to this, the Korean war as part of a broad civil defense and war mobilization effort in the context of the cold war. So I, I think they, they are overstating the impact of the executive order that Biden put down. I'd probably be more concerned with the laws that they're trying to be passed in the state of California, which are mandating how much compute power, what's the compute power threshold would be for certain, for certain models that need to be, that need to have government oversight. 
In preparation for this week's Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, the GOP adopted a platform that includes repealing the Biden AI executive order. Okay, uh, we will repeal Joe Biden's dangerous executive order that hinders AI innovation and impose and imposes radical left wing ideas on the development of technology. GOP says in its place, Republicans support AI development rooted in free speech and human flourishing. The framework, actually, what I prefer is both sides just get away, get out of AI completely, and just let the researchers and the businesses do what they're doing already, and just, let's not politicize this and start injecting um, our own. View, political views into this because it can cause a lot more a lot more issues. I don't want to see Democrats, Republicans kicking this football back and forth and turning this into a political issue. The framework provides an early look at what potential policies uh, Republicans will pursue to replace the Biden executive order. In response to a request for a comment from the Post, the Trump campaign chair linked to a 2023 blog post which said, no aspect of future presidential staffing or policy announcements should be deemed official unless they come directly from Trump or an authorized member of his campaign team. America's first party first policy institute spokeswoman Hilton Beckham said in a statement that the document does not represent the organization's official position. AFPI does not coordinate with or represent a candidate or campaign. We received thousands of policy ideas. Greater military investment in AI probably stands to benefit tech companies that already contract with the Pentagon, such as Andrew, Palantir and Scale, and A16Z. Uh, last time I heard Palmer Lucky talking, he was hit banging the drums or oh, eventually China's gonna invade Taiwan, or we're going to go to war with China. And then A16Z, they're, they're constantly banging the drum because they have billions in different defense startups that they uh, are investing in. They really want to see war. And we have a members-only video called Why Mark Wants War with China. And I go into an hour explaining why they want this. And then I go into explaining why a war with China does not make any sense to U.S. interests and why China's want it either, but these venture capitalists are trying to bang the drums and make it sound like the, the American public wants it. Also, we just released a video on reviewing the research behind Strawberry and going into Google's potential acquisition of Wiz and previous acquisitions they've done. And then also we talked about the hidden mechanisms of scapegoating uh, by Rene Girard, which is an important concept to understand how we have to find something, to, how society has to find someone to blame for society's issues. Uh, if you are a supporter of the show, you get access to this. And quick shout out to our new supporters who joined this week. We had uh, Cloud232. We had uh, Tyler M. We had Daniel Moss. We had Savage Title. We had Cosm N joined. We had Expert uh, Noob who uh, upgraded. And we had the Troll who upgraded too. So we really appreciate that. So thank you for supporting the show. And uh, it really means a lot to us. And also, if you want to uh, support the show um, for a year or so and get a 10% discount, go to patreon.com forward slash sick. And also, thank you to Mark M., Andres, uh, Andres K., and Peter for supporting our show. It means a lot. It keeps us on the air. So let's go back to the story. So greater military investment in AI provides, uh, probably stands to benefit tech companies that already contract with Pentagon. At the same time, the Conservative Heritage Foundation has also been drafting potential new AI policies as part of Project 25, a blueprint for how potential second Trump, uh, second Trump term could overhaul the federal government. Trump campaign has distanced itself from the plan, which includes several policies aimed to spur AI research and development in the United States and limit China's access to technology. In the chaotic aftermath, the attempted assassination of Trump, key tech executives and investors, including Tesla CEO Elon Musk and hedge fund manager Bill Ackman, have endorsed Trump for president. And that's really interesting because right now Musk is helicoptering in about $45 million a month into uh, the Trump campaign. And hey, uh, I don't really think that's, yeah, he can do what he wants to do with his money, but I think it, I think we need to consider, hmm, it's very democratic. People can just put millions and millions of dollars into an election while the common person, the common American might be able to do five or $10. Hmm, I don't know. Not policy person. Doesn't sound really good to me. But what Elon needs to be aware of though is he is, um, He's leaning into the right right now. He can do what he wants. But at the same time, he's, he's going to be isolating a left. And a lot of liberals were buying Tesla cars. And he has to be very careful about what he does here. And so hmm, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see if that leads to less people buying Tesla cars in California, New York, and other other liberal locations instead by Rivian cars. And this is great for Rivian because Elon's constantly getting into his own. There's something, there's drama that he gets involved in because he puts his own foot in his mouth. Like recently, did a tweet showing. Um, all of these uh, comic book heroes and their lackeys. And I'm showing all the comic book lackeys 
and there are a bunch of just white people. And then he has a picture of everyone that's a, either a black person or a non-white next to it. And he retweeted this. I was like, who, who cares? Society changes. And if a person, if a society wants a brown person to, to play uh, a comic book character that was white, what should matter mostly is did the person do a good job acting the role? Just like there's Targaryens, there's brown Targaryens. I don't know if there's brown Targaryens in the book. They're in the House of Dragons. They're doing a kick-ass job. I don't, I don't care what the skin color is or anything else. What matters to me is, is the acting good. But anyways, he's getting himself involved in this stupid crap, which is politicizing his organization more, and it's just not good. And he, and I just, and I'm fine with him doing whatever he wants to do. But later, what he does is, he then will he did he'll do a post later on say, ooh, why am I missing all my ad revenues going away? Ooh, you know, it's like well you. You pissed off a lot of the liberals, so they don't want to do advertising anymore. So there is – I'm against canceling people. I think that's terrible. But if you have a platform and you're pushing the pushing agenda, if you want to do your thing, you're pushing the right agenda, then people from the left don't want to be on your platform, nor do they want to spend advertising dollars. And that's their right too. It's your right to go right if you want to, and it's their right to get out of there because you're going too right. So uh, in the chaotic aftermath, you have uh, the attempted – uh, and then we'll probably get in the comment section. Oh, you're, you're anti-free speech. And, uh, 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 even though you worked at tech companies and you've seen your friends get canceled and their livelihoods ruined, you're, you're anti-free speech. It's like, please, don't start. In the chaotic aftermath of the attempted assassination of Trump, key tech executives and investors invested. During the time of the White House, Trump maintained close ties to venture capitalist Peter Thiel and some executives with the former PayPal CEO's orbit, but often clashed with other tech titans over immigration policies and social media rules. On Tuesday, venture capitalists Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz endorsed Trump. On their podcast, they said he was the best candidate for little tech, a term they use to refer to startups that have raised millions of dollars from their firm, Andreessen and Horowitz and other investors. They have posted a political agenda in which they said the U.S. government has become far more hostile to new startups than it used to be by regulating new technologies such as the blockchain and AI. So they have tons of bags right now in blockchain. They invested so much money, and a lot of these companies are going tits up, and it's not because of the regulations, because there's no use cases for the blockchain. A lot of these, there's just, there's, there are some use cases, but the sweeping societal changes that Bology wants, it's just because there's no, people don't want to, either pay for it, there's no need, or it runs parallel to a non-blockchain use case that's already working. Like, hey, we're going to do blockchain for the real estate. We're going to change how we do uh, titles. And uh, we're going to change when you do escrow. But we're going to put it in the blockchain. And most title companies are like, we're already happy with what we're doing. It's fine. And we're not going to pay more for what you're doing. So go run along now. That's the thing where AI companies struggle too with. They say, oh, we... We're AI. We're adding AI here. It's like, great. But you also have to build a real business around that. You can't just be, you just use AI. You have to build a business or you're screwed. Um, let's see. Dan Damon Wade. I try to be a political person. If it wasn't for social enabled programs, neither one, of the, none of his companies would be worth all, all the money is today. So it's quite hilarious. His positions of people um, on people are different. Yes, he's gotten a lot of money from tax subsidies. For his electric cars and SpaceX wouldn't have gotten to where it is today without NASA. And people have this idea that you 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 can't you can't say you can't believe two things. You believe either or you have to believe either it was only because of uh, NASA and the tax cuts that Tesla worked. You can only believe that, but you can't believe if it wasn't for Elon Musk getting all of his billions of dollars and selling everything and investing in in Tesla and SpaceX, those companies are worn off the ground. But if you believe this, the rule is you can't believe that NASA or the subsidies actually helped him. It's like you have to believe one or the other. Pick a side. Pick a side. Or you can believe both. People don't like that. People want to pick a side, you know. So, anyways, uh, on their podcast, two venture capitalists said Trump relayed his views on AI to at a recent dinner they had with him. They said Trump had a very simple view of, tech, of the technology in contrast to the Biden administration. What he said to us is, AI is very scary, but we absolutely have to win. Horror recounted, because if we don't win, then China wins, and that's a very bad world. It's just, it, oh, so they just really, oh, just, just, just change AI with nuclear weapons, and then change China to Russia, and it's still, this article is basically a Cold War article. That's what it is. They're pushing more Cold War fear, 
and they're not doing it because they care about America. They're doing it because they care about their portfolio. And I don't begrudge them. I'm fine with people voting with their pocketbook. I'm fine with people voting for certain social causes. But I like when they're direct. I don't like when they try to they try to wrap the flag around it or play games to to make people look so pure. That's why these the the VC cla- the VC folks are worse than realtors. Like the VCs will go around and say, "Oh, these people are biased here, and these people are biased here," and nah, nah, nah. but they never talk about their own biases. Very few do. Um, so, the voice of support for his plan to revoke the Biden AI executive order, which Andreessen said would enshrine OpenAI and a handful of other AI companies' monopolies and destroy the startup ecosystem underneath that. I, again, he's doing he's catastrophizing. Uh, it's an exec- I don't like the executive order either, but it's far from setting it up so that there's only a, very few who can do this. I mean, there's only very few companies that can, tre- can create foundational models, not because of regulation. It's because everything's so damn expensive. And the know-how required. So the capital required, raising it, you need to have a big VC behind you or, be, or a big uh, Google or Microsoft big corporation. You then need to have a ridiculous network of the top ML engineers. There's only 180,000 in the world, and of them, there's very few who are open AI caliber. You then need to have the GPUs, which are ridiculously expensive to get. You then need the data centers to train it. So there's there's more market limiting reasons why people are getting are not creating foundation models than there is uh, government restrictions. And this is someone who is very yimby and thinks California needs to open the gates with more housing everywhere, especially more affordable housing right down the street from Mark Andreessen, who voted down affordable housing, even though he said he invested in Adam Newman's new venture because he thinks there needs to be more housing in America because it's good for society. So he's, he's a hypocrite. Trump has been making greater overtures to Silicon Valley in recent weeks, appearing on the All In podcast. Okay, so there's that. Now let's – we um, – oh. Let's see in the comment section. Uh, Santiago Merlo says, I got a live stream. Yes, Santiago, good to see you. And I uh, hope you were able to tune into our members-only video. That's my bias. Keep our, keep us on the air. It's very important to get that to do that to support us. So let's go to um, – we have Jace is going to be here in a hot minute. So we have about seven minutes, and I want to see if we can jump into a little bit to Andreessen Horowitz. Okay, so – Let's see. Okay, so another thing is, I talk about little tech. We're here for little tech and little tech and little tech, and they're so great. It's like, no, little tech's not what matters. Little tech's will be fine. And they say it's little tech, but actually it's startups that are getting getting checks for hundreds of millions of dollars. They're fine, millions of dollars even. They're okay because they have venture capitalists who are lobbying the federal government to make sure things are good for them. They're fine. So little tech is, they're the bourgeoisie. Who really matters are true small businesses, such as the people who are building bakeries and restaurants and the mechanic shops and HVAC repair and gutter cleaning business. Why do they matter? They employ 50% of people in America. And also why do they matter? They're more likely to hire people who come from uh, non-traditional backgrounds. So mean they didn't go to the Ivy League schools. They maybe have less than a high school education. They may have convicted – they might have a criminal record. They might come from uh, – they might have disabilities, issues like that. Small businesses are much more willing to hire these people, where startups, the, the little tech, very selective in who they hire. They mostly hire the elites, the brainiacs, and things like that. So I'm more concerned of small businesses, and small businesses don't have this great lobbying uh, backing and support as little tech does for A16Z and things like this. So again – it's very disingenuous. They're just talking their book. So this is just they're they're pu- they're they're pushing their angle. They're for Trump. They didn't explain when they pushed back on that what the the official said. Who is the official who said this this conversation? Uh, I don't believe they would go this hardcore and say we're going to regulate math. I don't think that's even that's not even possible. It's laughable. I think what the argument was is there could be a point that a certain type of algorithm is discovered from some lab. That leads to ASI that can crack code and it can uh, crack encryption because it's like also it built quantum computers and it's going to destroy a financial structure. That business can be nationalized. All the research would make sure they make sure the research never is published. They would make sure anyone going in and out of that lab is going through security checks and backgrounds. They would be monitored as hardcore as the Los Alamos lab where they're doing nuclear research. So, yes, they can do that. And so, 
but he's trying to make it sound like they're going to outlaw like linear algebra. So no one knows it or anything. Um, so I, you're getting hearsay from them, but you're also, they're pushing an agenda of trying to make it sound that a certain administration is the complete antichrist towards technology. And this is why we support Donald Trump. And what's funny is they go through this whole entire conversation of little companies and why we're so good. And we, they don't talk about how much money they're going to make if, if we go to war with China and their policies push, but then eventually they go into finally. Just in what kind of economic activity you don't want to exist. So, right, right, yeah. right. This is why often like people would prefer a property tax over an income tax because you don't want to discourage people from working. You'd rather discourage them from owning like massive houses or something. So something like from that. an incentive, you know, so that's one argument. Yes. Not the argument I'm making, but one argument. <laughs> yeah, that's the kind of argument. <laughs> Those of you with big houses, I'm not after you, whatever. <laughs> so, um, so just to kind of to bring people up to speed on this, um, you know, so a common criticism you'll hear about the American economy or the capital system, whatever, is there's not enough long-term investment, you know, you know it's yeah. all short-term trading. There's not enough, you know, long-term, you know, building, building, um, you know, big, important new things. Um, and so the, the, the tax is relevant to the idea of building big new things is capital gains tax. Sure. Um, and capital gains tax, by the way, capital gains tax applies to tech startups. It applies to small businesses. It applies to <laughs> actually uh, okay, uh, yeah. you know, people who build buildings and entry. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's very in, in an asset that you're like, like a business or a building uh, that you're building. And the way that the way that the tax code has been wired forever is basically that, that, that basically capital gains tax applies uh, when, uh, when the when the when the asset is sold. Uh, yeah. Jesus takes forever. OK, basically he's saying is some kook said, hey, we should let's say you go and buy a house. And then your house is was a hundred thousand dollars, and now the house is worth three hundred thousand dollars. That two hundred thousand dollars unrealized gain, you should be taxed on that for some percentage, and yet your net worth has to be a hundred million or higher or something. I think that's a stupid idea. The reason why is I, hey, increase the income taxes you want, do that because that's when you sell an asset and there's cash in hand and you pay it. If you just start, regardless of how rich someone is, like billionaire status or over a hundred million, start saying, okay, well you have fifty billion dollars of un unrealized gains. You owe you owe the government ten percent of that. That person now has to either divest from their from their business. They could be owning farmland, be owning wineries. They could be owning a good tech startup. They could be good founders. For instance, Larry and Sergey still own a significant share of Google. I don't want them divesting because they it still gives them the ability to have some control over the company. I'd have, prefer having them in control instead of Wall Street. Also, what if you're a founder and you have a unicorn startup or something, and you get a gigantic valuation, and now you have to figure out some way to pay this tax on the unrealized gains? It becomes very, very silly and very stupid. Now, they say this is the reason why that this tipped them over is supporting Trump. But they spend a whole entire hour with their whole little tech, big tech bullshit. If they would just start off and saying, hey, this new form of taxation is bad for our business, and that's why we're supporting Trump, that's fine. But instead, they try to like make this whole hand-wavy little tech argument, war with China and all this crap. So that's why I'm giving them an F on their, their points of view. Because they're playing. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Visit our store at svitmerch.com. <laughs> Support my uncle Jordan. Have a great day.